That's so sad. Why the <laughs> fuck would you start <laughs> wait, with that? Oh, wait, wait, no, no. Like, Ted. he's not dead. I was going to say, what do you mean Teddy's Sorry. no more? Oh, oh wait. My I think God. he's just... He's gone to a farm to, like, retire with other dogs of his breed. My mom's like, I'm not moving him to the new house. There's heated floors in the basement. And if he pees, it's going to make a mess. I thought get- you were talking about Teddy, the old tech guy. Oh, well, you and didn't I, even care. And I was He's like, zero. He's like, I'm cool, like, that was going to happen. I was like, that guy died? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> so in the, can I just be honest? In the Please. beginning, bro, <laughs> I didn't like you. Right? You're so mean. I, li- well, I, liked you. <laughs> I liked you in the interview, but you were wearing a mask. Yeah, and oh, the yeah. first day you started, Don't I remember even. I'm going to. I walked by you. <laughs> And I turned to somebody, I don't know if it was you, and I said, It's me. Who, Who's this, that? who is this? <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're like, that's the guy you hired. I'm like, I did not hire that guy because you had a glorious mustache. Yes, sir. Still do. You not, yeah, I know you do now, yeah. but you graduated yeah, to the graduated full man beard. beard. But you just had, and I didn't expect it because you had a mask on the whole time. So when I walked by you, oh, I didn't hire that kid. I, I don't know who that is. No, and he was who tucked away guy? in the corner with <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The barricade. So even I, like for the first like two weeks, couldn't make eye contact. I was just staring at the stash. I was like, I don't know. I'm like reading his lips, <laughs> trying to make eye contact, looking at the mustache. Can't understand it. Also the, the first person I've ever met that cared enough about the mustache to have a, a, a oh, also. Like that's let me level. remind you. That's another. He level. was 20 yeah. with a fully oh, developed was tw- mustache. Was, you know, 21. I was, I was an old, nice old man. Developed oh, man. Sweet baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today on the podcast, we have Jacob, and Jacob has uh, rolled in on kind of a during, well, during COVID, right? Yeah. You joined during COVID. Right the peak. Uh, old fashioned interview, face to face. I have a lot of respect for you because your age doesn't match your mindset. And what I mean by that is you are very focused on. You understand investing. It's something you're really into. You're really good at, um, I think you're really good at helping people make smart financial decisions because you understand. Yeah. You understand the future. Like we talk about it all the time. We run into people who are about to enter retirement or in retirement and just made some critical mistakes that yeah. had we talked to them earlier. And it's it's unusual for someone at your age to be able to pick that up. Where did you get that from? Um, I have to thank my dad big time. He very like when I was my first job at 15, I made like a few grand. I worked at Wonderland and he's like, okay, we should take that money and we should start putting it away because one day you're not going to want to work anymore. So you need to put the money away. And I'm like, okay, sounds good, dad. Let's go. So he kind of led me into it. And then I sort of grabbed the reins and went from there. I just fell in love. I just love. And we talk about that all the time that it's your, your financial skills are often taught by your family. And you and I yeah. shared this Big all the time, time. right? Yeah, yeah. That that's a gift that you can give to your your kids alone, just by teaching them how it works. As long as you're right, right? yeah. yeah <laughs> right. Hopefully, hopefully you're not giving bad advice. Yeah, well, that's true too. Like a lot of our parents didn't, let's say, aren't weren't exposed to, let's say, the investing world and things like that. Mm-hmm. So to have a parent that can instill that, especially. 10 years ago yeah. is huge. Cause I know my like parents are like new to the game and are just understanding it now because my older brother, but 10 years ago, it was kind of like just stuff your money under your mattress and make oh, it, yeah. make it grow. Kind you of thing. also have a unique, like, so you mentioned Wonderland, yeah. but what, not what led you here, but what's your, what was your employment or experiences? You were, you were looking at a path of, Working, going to school, yeah. university, college. Walk us down how what you made those led to those decisions and why you made those. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll make it relatively quick, but I went to university. I was studying chemistry and physics. I was a semester in, didn't like it at all. I thought I was good in school. Like I got good grades. I just hated going to class. I hated having to be told what to do, doing the lectures. I thought I was going to be done with that in high school. So I dropped out of university after a semester. My dad said, maybe college is better. It's more hands-on. You can like do more physical things. So I traded college for a semester manufacturing airplane parts. That was even more boring. No way. Yeah, really? I don't think I ever told you that. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was doing that. That was the most, that was even worse than university. And that was more hands-on. We were doing like CNC machine and stuff. That sucked too. So got rid of that. Then I just started working. I hooked up with a pool company around here and I just built pools for a couple of years. And I enjoyed it, but 
I'm not the biggest, strongest uh, guy. I don't want to use my brawn for my whole life. I figured use the brains a little bit more. So I needed to find something that I could be. And I also knew that from that work, it taught me a lot about myself and how I really enjoy working. I like getting up. I like working. I like to work hard. So I wanted something where I didn't just sort of get paid a salary for going into work. I wanted the value that I provided to be reflected in what I got paid back. So I was looking for something commission-based. I like real estate. I like numbers. So I figured my well, mortgage financing, it's commission-based, works for me. So rolled into it. All right. And you, you're you leaving your, you're skipping hockey life, which is yeah, uh, yeah. a big uh, underlying. Big theme in this place. Yeah. We seem to have a lot of ho- <laughs> ex-hockey life oh, yeah, we do. Uh, employees. But that gave you an, uh, your foot in the door on also face-to-face sales, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a little bit like I was a high school kid in there. I got, like That was a job where I was just going in to work my hours and just get my yeah, 15 yeah. bucks an hour or whatever it was. But yeah, you're definitely interacting with clients. You got to show them. I was doing goalie stuff. So I had to show them, okay, go down, make sure your knees in this part. How's it feel? Slide back to, you know, back and forth. Does this feel better? Does that feel better? So you got some introduction to the sales part of it, but at that job I didn't like. That was another one where it's was like, all right, let's just go in, work my hours and get out as quick as I can. You're, I have kids, right? So that dropping out of university and that conversation I can tell you got support but what were you were you uh, apprehensive to have that conversation with your your dad or your parents or for university yes because I was the first one I dropped out of college I think we all knew it was coming and I just walked into the <laughs> kitchen one day and I'm like dad like I just I'm not doing this anymore he's like I know I can I can tell so university even university the first I was like halfway through the first semester and I'm like this is not I'm not enjoying this at all he's like all right we'll just finish the semester at least get a credit or two yeah. and we'll figure it out so I, I got through the rest of that but then I was a couple months into the college and I'm like this is just so this is not working this is I've never met your dad but this is one of the things that I often praise your dad when we talk because that kind of support's important yeah big time at that age you really don't no, or you stay because you think I have to do it because my parents want me to and yeah, I want to make yeah. my parents happy. But your dad or your family giving you the courage or support to be you, do you, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. You probably take it for granted. You know, it's easy to take it for granted, but that's my parent. But that's not the way it normally works. So you're yeah. fortunate, right? That- big time, big time fortunate. And even, I mean, Father's Day just passed. So I went and got him some little book from Tim's. I don't know if you've seen them, those little 30-page oh, yeah, 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 books yeah. he filled up. So I just got that to be just for fun. But some of the things, it makes you really think about kind of what you appreciate about your father. And one of the things I wrote was that um, I, I appreciated how he, I, and I, I never really appreciated until I got older, how sort of, easygoing and uh, encouraging he was. He's like, I want the world of options for you. I want you to be able to do whatever you want, but you got to get up there and you got to go do it. So I don't necessarily care what it is. So when I came to him and said, university is not working, he's like, okay, that's no problem, but let's find something else. So he was very, he wasn't like, you have to do this. You have to get the degree and go work here. He he wanted that. I know he wanted me to do it. But at the end of the day, when I didn't want it, he's like, I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to force you to do something you don't want. Let's find something else that's better for you. Always encouraging and helping to progress you. Which yeah. he was the best for that. That's a great one of the greatest things that I remember being young, going to college, going, changing, and I would say he would, my dad would say to me, and I got this similar support. Uh, I would say, oh, you know, I want to do this, but I can't, and he'd be like, why well, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, well, because X, Y, Z, and he's like, so we can do that. Let's figure mm-hmm. out how we do X, Y, Z. Don't ever say I can't do that. Yeah, Just yeah. go for it, and but you got to put the effort in. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. So it's those are very. I can see how that shaped who you are now and oh, why yeah. I, I say often to you, like you've got a head start on people your age and you're one of the youngest, you know, members on staff that we have that super successful in what we do right now in our system. And I think that family plays a big role in that because you have the, you know, you have the courage. I say the greatest gift you can give your kids is self-confidence. Yeah. I got that. Right. And loads money, all that stuff's <laughs> great. But if you don't, if you don't have, if you can't pump or instill self-confidence into your, your children, then they have, you know, they, they got to struggle. It's, oh, hard yeah. to, it's hard to make that up at 30. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. So you're really lucky. So you worked in a couple of things in and out of school, not trying to find out or trying to find out. I mean, what, what was going to make you click? How yeah. did you get here? Were you at another brokerage before? Like how, how did you end up? So I don't think I've ever told you sort of how I truly Uh-oh. felt how I truly <laughs> how I truly <laughs> felt when I applied here. So I was working at another brokerage. I was there for like three or four months. It was a really small shop, just a couple of guys. They were 
primarily, I learned this after I got hired, they were primarily a real estate, like buying and selling uh, brokerage rather than a mortgage brokerage. Okay. They were trying to expand the business. So I was like the first agent they brought on. They didn't do many mortgages. I never did a mortgage, so I had no idea what was going on. Uh, so I basically did no business at all there for four or five months. And then I said, okay, this, is, this isn't working. I really want to do this. I want to be successful in this business. Uh, let me go apply to some other places. So I applied to three or four or five other places, all of them with sort of a similar business model to them where you kind of just hang your hat there and go out and get your right, business right, and, yeah, and do yeah. your thing. Um, and then I interviewed here. And to be honest, I I loved everything about this place. And I, I don't know how much you'll explain to the, you know, on the podcast, but we have a bit of a different business model than the average brokerage. And I felt a little bit like I would have failed if I took this job because I wanted to go out. I wanted to get the business. I wanted to do it all myself. I wanted to be a hundred percent. And okay. I was, a, I was a little, maybe a little bit too like proud of myself. Like I, I felt like I failed if I came to this place where I just sit in the desk and I get, you know, I get given people to call and I just got to call them and work the, you know, work the phone and make it happen. I felt like I was kind of failing a little bit. Yeah. That's interesting though. Yeah. I don't think I've ever told you that, but coming here, it's no. been the best decision of my life. So to, to when you here. started, do you think that that um, set you back in any way? Did you ever feel like you had to adjust your mindset like at noon and you're like, you know what? I'm thinking way too into this. I just need to kind of put myself yeah. up for the task that's given to me and get it done. Did well, you ever feel that? It was like a quick change of mindset. So probably within the first day or two, like I came here with the same mindset of like, I felt a little bit down on myself. Like I felt mm -hmm. almost like I failed. Like I didn't do it on my own. And then as soon as I started seeing the environment, seeing how the process works, like, okay, I'm still doing a huge part of the product. I'm still doing yeah. quite a bit of work. It's not like I'm just some little button pusher no, at the no, office. Yeah. You have it's a huge, room. yeah, you have a huge role. Yeah. And then I, you start seeing success. You start actually working with clients and I realized, okay, it's probably good even and at the beginning. It's another thing that I don't think I've ever mentioned. It's like, maybe I'll just do this for a little bit, kind of get decent at the business. Then I'll go off and do it on my own. Yeah. But then the more you do it, it's like, you have a great team. I love what I do. I make um, decent enough money. Like I'm happy with what I make. I, I like what I do. So let me stay here. I enjoy it. I still yeah. feel like I'm actually doing the work. I'm, I don't feel like a little button pusher. I feel yeah. like I'm actually getting out there making something happen. And so, but then that took maybe a week at most for me to realize, okay, this is an awesome place. Like I love being here. Yeah. So it, that's so John Cola mortgages. I, no, yeah, we no, always tease no, it. Right? Yeah, 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 when are you going to open up your own shop? <laughs> no. Because, because when you first got here, I remember, <laughs> so funny, you asked the wrong questions to Adriano. And right away, Adriano came up to me like, I think we might have to get rid of this guy. <laughs> I'm like, why? Well, I hadn't quite warmed up to him yet. And I'm like, tell me, tell me why. Yeah, give me a yeah. reason. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Um, uh, and he's like, well, because he's, you know, he's asking like, how do we structure this and how we structure that? And I was like, listen, let's just work with him because <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to be really good. I just got to break him in a little bit, so to speak. Yeah. Because I still remember every time I think about, and I walk by that spot because now we've got the office set up different, but I remember you were sitting over there by the window yeah. Yeah. and you scooped the iPad underneath Oh, your, yeah. No, yeah, signing with jacket, no audit. And I was like, yo, where are you going? Signing. Do I go to signing? I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> the process here is yeah. a lot different. I need yeah. to look at the deal. We need to do this and structure this. I remember and you're that. Like, oh, no, I have an appointment. Well, you better cancel yep. it, son, because you're, <laughs> you're not signing it that way. But I've never really looked at that perspective that a mortgage agent would look at it as a step back. Yeah. Because I developed the system because I was a mortgage agent yeah. at a couple yeah. of other brokerages. And I'm like, how do you expect me? And at that time, I coached football at a large roster. I was in radio and TV. I owned my own business before. When I took it, and I, you and I laugh about this all the time, I was like, oh, I just need to do like one mortgage a month oh, yeah, and yeah. I'll be rich. <laughs> and then I was like, I have zero mortgages. Yeah. I think I sent out a blast of like 5,000 people and one person said, good luck in your career. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's it. That's all I get because people who know you don't want to share that information. So when I developed this and we were hashing all in, I'm like, oh, the number one, uh, what problem can I solve for myself? Yeah. Because I was still doing it for me, still, still doing deals. What's the number one problem I can solve? I need people to talk to. Yeah. That's the, everything yeah. else. All the products are the same. Processes are different here and there. But the bottom line is you need as many people to talk to, to see who you can help find, you know, find a solution for. And so I did it backwards. And I still remember it was a Sunday. I was watching Buffalo Bills play somebody. And I sat down and worked out a reverse engineer of what I, how many people do I personally need to talk to to make this happen. And then I just like, now double it, triple it, quadruple it, 
Yeah. Do, 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 and I think you get. still use that same blueprint. I still Probably. do because yeah. it works. So if I yeah. know we bring on a new person, we're really excited about somebody, I just turn the marketing lever one way yeah. or the other to match what I know that person needs to, to have success. You have had a lot of success, though. Thanks right? to you. Right? In reality, yeah. when you really step back and think about it, this sometimes we... We have goals and we say, oh, I want to get you to this level. And I want to get you to that level. And what, it, what do you think it is or what's the it about Newboro? Why it's worked so well for you? Well, new, there's sort of two ends to it. It's parts Newboro and then parts the agent as well. I mean, right, yeah, you have sure. to work. That's yeah. a good point because yeah. the system's the system. Yeah. And we, I say it all the time. Uh, We've had successes and failures it's like with the, the same Patriots. process. Yeah. It's, I run it like the Patriots. It's a system. If you follow the system and you can execute, you will do well. But yeah. that's not, you still have to be a player. Yeah, you got to come in and, and show up and put your yeah. best foot forward. So putting that aside, which is just obvious, if you want to do well in anything in life, like get up, go to work, work hard when you're actually there. But the pro, like the system at Newboro, and again, before coming in, you don't know anything about it. So I figured I'd be a cowboy out there getting deals, whatever. But coming in, there's a very, very, well, it's a strict process, but you can kind of bend within yeah, sure. it. But you come in, you have a set guideline of what needs to be done. You get your leads, you call the leads, you have to process them through. When you process them through, what is the process? Well, you put together the, the DLO, you put together the offer, you show them a couple options, you walk them through how the options are going to work, what issues there are currently on the file, how you can help improve them, you put a plan together for the client. That's huge value on the other side. And if you sort of spin the tables and look at it from their perspective, most people are probably just getting, this is the interest rate, this is the payment, and if you want it, you can just sign right over here. Versus you come yeah. in here, and it's easy to be successful when you follow the process, because it's like, yeah. who cares about the interest, who cares about the payment, that doesn't mean anything. You've got bigger problems that we need to solve. There's credit yeah. issues, there's high interest debt that you can make monthly payments on. Let's help solve that problem first. Once we alleviate the payments, that'll make it easier for us to improve the credit. Once the credit's improved, then it could take you back to the bank. Then you'll have good credit, a mortgage, no debt, and life's good. Yeah. Oh, well, how can I, as a client, how can I say no to that? This guy put a whole plan together for me. So success in here is easy if you just show up, work, and just listen to you, basically, and just do whatever you say, especially at the beginning. I think that is the one thing I really like about what it is that we do is that when I develop the plan and we're like, this is what, this is what we need to make sure the clients do, what clients don't see on the on the outside is you do the plan. I review the plan. We talk about whether that yeah. makes sense. We yeah. talk about whether they can execute it. Yeah. We, I, when I used to be a personal trainer, I used to say to them all the time, I don't want you here for life. I know no. that yeah. that would make sense as a personal trainer to have you as a Probably. long time forever yeah. client, but then I'm failing. I was just gonna say, you failed them at that My point. My job yeah. is to train you to a certain level where you don't need me anymore. Yeah. And when yeah. I did the plan and we we're developing what it is about Newborough that'll be different, that plan, ha that's why I push you guys all the time. Well, the plan doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, is no, it doesn't. Yeah. You can't get this product in year two because of this reason. So yeah. we have to fix that reason. So yeah. rework your plan. And you are one of the few, like you got, you are detailed. You know the plan. Yeah. It's my favorite part about doing audits with you is you come in and say, this is easy. Yeah. If Mr. and Mrs. Smith do this, they're going to they're gonna yeah. be perfect and we'll, everything will work out. With that in mind, and you've done a lot of deals, brother, like yep. in the time you've been here, you've done a Almost ton, three years I've been here. A ton. Time flies. Really, it's crazy. Right? Time flies. Yeah, it is really fast <laughs> to think about that. You got to have a client impact story or some a client that really stands out in your mind that a good story that yeah, yeah of course right that really yeah for sure so yeah. i i mean i knew this question was gonna be coming so i prepped a little bit right. but i mean we've i can pick almost any client and it's pretty much a success story as long as the client helps and follows the plan and sort of helps you know themselves help and get help um they can all be good stories so i figured which one should i say i'll probably say the first one that i helped that i actually saw go all the way through the process from Amazing. not being yeah. in the best position to it's true because you would see it at this particular point yeah, in your career up, exactly and up to maybe the eight or nine month mark i never really seen one of my clients move all the way through the process so the first one i ever did and he was in a pretty poor spot initially he had his father uh, was diagnosed with cancer terminal cancer he's in the hospital so my client took off work stopped working because he wanted to spend the last couple months with his dad in the hospital stop working using the credit cards using the lines of credit to make all his payments those all got maxed out, couldn't make the payments anymore, fell behind on the mortgage, went into power of sale. So he's got his credit was in the 500s, maxed out credit cards, maxed out lines of credit, power of sale on the mortgage. 
I opened this thing up and I was still fairly new. I checked, it was I think my 10th or 12th client I worked with. So I was like pretty early in the process. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, holy, this is like a huge situation. We ended up getting him an equity loan because I, with the credit, the way you have it, it's hard for a bank to get anything done. So we gave him a one year equity loan, paid out the debt, brought the power of sale, brought all the arrears up to date, but got everything back into good standing. The equity loans, they don't report to the credit bureau. So all the debt got taken off the bureau. Over the course of the next year, I gave him some cash just to help get through. His father ultimately ended up passing away, unfortunately, but he went back to work once that was done. And then at the end of that one year term on the equity loan, he, we were able to sort of refinance, consolidate his first mortgage with his equity loan. And at that point, like I was saying before, he had a brand new mortgage with the bank. He had good credit and he had no extra debt. Amazing. So, Unreal. Right? Those are the graduation stories when uh, people, especially when you're new, and I say this is what we do and this is how it works, most of the time I get a, a face like, I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. Well, it does. You know, we have cabinets now, it's all digital, but we have digital files, thousands of people who yeah. have had these graduation moments. But it's, I agree, it's not until you're here yeah. to see the name come through renewals and see it happen and go, oh, wow, yeah. what happened to that guy? Or the renewal agents come over and say, hey, guess what? You know, we got him done at TD or Bank yeah. of Nova Scotia. And those are moments that, for me, when I'm done, long gone, that will be the thing that I know that we did. We did right. Yeah. Yeah. Big and time. I think also a part of our role, it's similar to parenting. Like we touched on confidence, building a client's confidence. Sometimes our clients come to us at such a low point in their life yeah. where they're almost like, listen, I know it looks bad, but it's because of X, Y, and Z and there's reasons behind yeah. it. So building our client's confidence when it comes to making decisions and obviously they're guided decisions with strategy really allows them to like just move forward because a lot of people yeah. like I can't move forward like I don't know how this plan is going to work so the confidence element kind of comes back it's instilling that confidence back in the client saying listen yeah. we work together we can get this done and we get it you've been I guess dealt a poor set of cards um let's get let's get it back yeah. on track right yeah. so that's a huge um, contributing factor and it's because you were raised that way I think that that translates to a lot of your clients as you you I hear you often on the phone it's just building the client's confidence it's like yeah. listen work with me you can get this done let's get it done and sometimes it's not even necessarily about building their confidence but letting them know like like you're not alone in this like yeah I've, I've done this thankfully now for three years I've been doing it I've been able to see a lot of different clients yeah. go through very very similar situations now yeah. I've never had a father with terminal cancer but look I probably take work off too and go spend, yeah. spend, spend the last yeah. with them, right so it's like you're in a bad situation but Look, we can help solve it. You've got something yeah. else bad going on in your life. Take care of that. Leave this with me. This is what I do for a living. Yeah. Let me help solve this side of the sort of equation. Mm -hmm. You deal with your dad. And at the end of the year, we'll come back. And we'll make it all better. Come that time. I'll yeah. help you fix the credit. I'll take care of the debt. You spend time with your dad. Yeah. And it was nice to see it ultimately just go to a bank, good credit, right? mortgage, mm -hmm. no debt. Two things that I, I really promote here is be a good guide, be an expert, and care about the person yeah. to the point where the person knows they can leave it with you yeah. Yeah. to get it done. And it's easy to say, it's really cool to write it on a website that that's yeah, what yeah. we do. But if yeah. we do it every day and mm -hmm. it shows up in reviews and it shows up in your your history when you work with clients and that's, yeah. that's what matters most to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100%. I really appreciate you being here today and doing this. This is one of those... I started off saying I didn't think I was going to like you, and now you're like a son to I was joke where my kids call you Uncle Jacob because you yeah. solved the Rubik's Cubes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they take all the stickers off and, and they ruin it for me. Yeah. <laughs> you still try and figure it Sometimes out. Sometimes they move the pieces to where I can't even solve it anymore. <laughs> uh, I told them last night or the other day they were messing with one, and I'm like, yeah, just move a block and let's see if you no, can you fix it. No, you Yeah, then I come in and I'm like, this one's, I can't solve this one. This one's impossible. They mess, they move the piece. I can't do it. But I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of how hard you work. Uh, not every guy at your age would, A, has your work ethic. If I put you in a room full of 500 people, all your same age, and I kept asking people to step forward at income levels, you'd soon turn around and look back and see that you're the one standing in the front of the line. Yeah. And that takes real hard work and buying into the system. And that's one thing that you did very early on and it's paid off. And I look forward to when you're here every day, right? It's one of those things that when you're here, <laughs> I know I'm going to have a good day. So I, I appreciate, appreciate it very much. And right. same to you, man. Without you and this whole place, I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today. So I appreciate right, it all. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks. <laughs>